next uh, example of uh, autobiography and i think let me check here in my in my plan um yeah today also <clears throat> i'll connect this um a little bit with uh, with really uh, uh edward said in the same way uh, he's talking there about his life it's um, the book we have um yeah so to today um yeah uh, of course, uh, as you can see in my plan, I mentioned to you some other examples of autobiography. Another African-American example of autobiography, but as maybe uh, I will show you in a minute, uh, I'm not going to give you that because really it's, um, it's a lot. Um, and I think that's enough to, to get the idea about that. The other example I mentioned in my outline, as maybe you have noticed in the outline, I, al I also included Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, and another really amazing man, um, and he's Frederick Douglass, and he wrote a, a great book, again, called An American Slave. You know, he's also talking about his life. It's about his own life. <clears throat> again, it is a great autobiography and he called it an american slave and the way he you know again in in a really dramatic fashion and the same exactly in the same way in fact frederick douglas wrote before he wrote his uh, his his book and his autobiography really before um, booker washington but you can see from the way they are written they look like being ex exactly like a carbon, uh, really like a carbon copy. So that's why I did not really, um, you know, keep it here for you because I thought this is enough. So today um, I will focus uh, on Edward Said, and Edward Said really is, um, again, as you can see from his name, Edward and Said, and I think he played on this name. Uh, and he worked, he tried to explain to us in this section that I, uh, I uh, sent you, I um, gave you in our notes. Um, really, it's, it's an amazing example. Again, it is an autobiography. <clears throat> it is a very huge, lovely book. I will show you here in a minute. Um, if we go back to our... Um, yeah, let me <clears throat> let me see. Uh, where is it here? yeah are you sharing the screen because uh, yeah, I, yeah I will I will in a second because I have not yet uh, I have not yet shared the I will in a second yeah now I will I will share. Yeah. Now you can see my screen, correct? Yes. Yeah. So uh, here, this is, uh, of course, the um, uh, I copied this again. I copied this from uh, from the um, from the from the net. Uh, thank God that we have all these uh, things available. Uh, so here, uh, a copy of the, uh, if you like, 
of the um, cover page <clears throat> of the book and it's called Out of Place, as you can see here, uh, the title by Edward Said, um, Edward W. Said, uh, Wadir, Edward Wadir Said. Really, in his name, he's, he's a Palestinian, really Palestinian uh, Arab uh, who uh, was forced out of Jerusalem or out of Palestine uh, when he was still a child, uh, about uh, nine or ten years old, um, he, because he was born in Jerusalem. And later on, of course, uh, in, um, in the title, as you can see, uh, really is very interesting to see here, the title, Out of Place, because everywhere he went <clears throat> after that, everywhere he went after that, he was made to feel that he is out of place, meaning it's not his place, it's not his home, it's not his country. And I think the title here is very, is very symbolical and is very true. It is very true. You know, when you are kicked out of your land, when you are kicked out of your home, um, you will never maybe find another home, uh, which is exactly, which is exactly maybe uh, a home. Because, uh, you know, here, that's why here, because he, he tells us in this book, it's a huge story, really. He tells us how, uh, as a child, they were uh, forced out of Jerusalem into, into Egypt, and how, he, how they, his parents, his family, moved or were moved or were kicked out of Palestine from Jerusalem into Alexandria, Egypt, and how he spent some of his childhood schooling in Alexandria, uh, Egypt. And in fact, he mentioned in this book, uh, this experience, he talked about it a lot in, that, in this book. And he mentions one of his best friends who were with him in the class at that time. And funny enough, and believe it or not, uh, his classmate was one of his classmates, of course, was Omar Sharif, uh, and I think maybe you know Omar Sharif and his name, of course, Omar Sharif. Really, this is his uh, his um, his uh, Hollywood name. He's not he's not Omar, and he's not Sharif. Really, he's, he's different. Uh, absolutely, his name is uh, Shalhub or something. His original name, something to do with Shalhub or something. I'm not sure exactly, but that's not important. I'm saying that he spent his childhood, uh, some of his childhood schooling in, in Alexandria, Egypt. And then they moved back from Egypt into Lebanon. And they lived for a while because one of his, you know, uh, aunts, you know, some of his aunts and uh, cousins and people, uh, some of them moved to Lebanon instead of going to Jerusalem, to, to Egypt. So that's why they moved from Alexandria into uh, Mount Lebanon um, and in, and, uh, in an area it's called the Dhur Shwer. And I think it's, um, it's a very famous place in, in, the, in Mount Lebanon, in, in Lebanon today, uh, called Dhur, Dhur, Dhur al Shwer. Really, Dhur means a Dhar, and a Dhar means a, a hill or a mountainous area. We call this Dahar, which is like uh, like a back, <laughs> you know, because the word Dahar could mean your back, really. That's that's also uh, the idea. So he lived for a while in uh, Lebanon, and then, you know, he told us about his, his father, how his father uh, emigrated to the States, and he was working there, and how his father lived in the States, and... Um, uh, you know, how he became an American army man and he joined the American army and so on. He, you know, he told us the whole story in this book called uh, Out of Place. And that's why how um, he ended up in the, in, in the States, in America, how he went uh, to, to do his, um, you know, after schooling. I don't know, maybe he mentioned, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly the date, uh, but uh, in the book, it's there. You can see it. Now, <clears throat> now I can't remember the details. 
of course, you can see it uh, all because I have the whole thing, you know, the whole book uh, online. You can see it there. It's a lovely, amazing, lovely book. Again, Edward Said really here is not, he's not um, telling us uh, bad or horrible stories as uh, maybe we know from um, Frederick Douglass or, um, or um, you know, uh, Booker Washington. Here, maybe after this, let me, let me show you what Frederick Douglass, because I told you last, uh, at the beginning of this lecture today, about Frederick Douglass as another black African uh, and it's here, uh, let me see, where is it? Douglas, it's here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the title. This one, you can, you can see it here also in your books, but as I said, <clears throat> I'm saying in your notes, but uh, this will not be included in our exam because, you know, uh, we we have enough uh, of black African uh, American, uh, if you like, um, literature or autobiography. And here, really, you can see this. Uh, this is the title. His title, you know, it's a it's a, a long, you know, uh, title narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave, written by himself. You know, this is you know the title here. It's quite interesting. Written by himself. And as you can see, Frederick Douglass, born 1818, died 1895. As I said, he wrote before Booker Washington. And as you can see, this is published in Boston, uh, 1845. And here really he gives us, you know, really lovely um, images and pictures and uh, drawings and all of this carry on how he um, lived uh, in his in his country in his county in Maryland uh, because he talks about it um, really in details here in in the Washington area really it's um, Maryland which is the Washington DC um, uh, area as you can see here in the map I think it's uh, it's quite clear so yeah i mean here you have i also included some of the chapters but as you can see i told you i'm not uh, really worried about it at the moment but again you know it's an amazing text uh from douglas here so edward said is different from douglas and different from from booker washington because he is a hugely um you know more advanced text Edward Said uh, really was a great professor uh, at uh, Columbia University, New York. He was at Columbia University, New York. In fact, I knew him personally. I went to his office in 1995. Myself, I was there in the States for a visit, and I, I made sure to visit him. And he <clears throat> he's... He was a, an amazing, absolutely powerful, amazing professor of comparative literature at Columbia University. And, uh, you know, we know him. <clears throat> He's a very active Palestinian, active Palestinian, uh, really, scholar who talked a lot and who wrote a lot in defense of Palestine, in defense of his own country and nation, and his of course, the case of Palestine, which is still, you know, with us today. Uh, and Said, uh, of course, as you can see all the time, you know, he remained absolutely loyal to his, to his country and to his people and to his beliefs and to his ideas and to his really ideology, who is an Arab, who is a Palestinian Arab, Yes, he's a Christian Palestinian Arab, but he was absolutely, uh, you know, um, adamant and powerful in defense of his own uh, case and his own, uh, if, if you like, um, Palestinian issue. And really, um, he wrote a huge text, I will mention to you in a minute. Uh, but you know, when he, when he died in 2003, 
uh, sadly, really, he died uh, in in cancer, which is really it, it was it's called leukemia, which was which was which is like a you know uh, some kind of they call it uh, you know a blood cancer, leukemia, which is really a horrible disease. But Saeed was was an amazing man. I think he was. I think I think he was the best. He was the best scholar in throughout Europe at his time. I'm sure at his time, because my my professor and when I was a student in in Britain myself, when I was doing my PhD, in fact, the first time I've heard of Edward Said is through him. And uh, my professor at that time, he told me to read Edward Said, and he said. You know, the, he's an Arab like you, so try to write and, you know, read his his studies and uh, try to learn from him. And I did learn, yes. I really, honest, honestly, I feel that I have taken a lot from him and I read everything that he wrote because uh, Edward Said was, was such an amazing, really, man. The best book that I read for him, the best book is called Orientalism. And I'm sure many people know Orientalism. And it's, this book was translated uh, all over the world, really, all over the world. Uh, it's, it's translated even back from English to, to Arabic because Edward Said wrote it in, in English originally because he, he spent all his life uh, writing in English and he lived, as I told you, he, he did his studies and his uh, you know, schooling. I think he finished schooling, and his BA and his PhD in um, in uh, in the states. Uh, and I think um, uh, he did his PhD in Princeton University. And he his PhD was uh, was on uh, Joseph Conrad, Joseph Conrad, the great novelist, uh, British, British, uh, Polish, originally Polish. Um, uh, novelist Joseph Conrad, and he was focusing more because Conrad um, was mostly writing about, uh, you know, colonialism and all this. And I think with Edward Said, the whole question of colonialism and post-colonialism was absolutely established. He was the best and the first man to talk about colonialism and post-colonialism in his studies and all the people after him, like Spivak and like Homi Baba and like, you know, all these names after him. Uh, some of those are Indian scholars like Gayatri Spivak, Gayatri Spivak and uh, also Homi Baba and some others, really they were influenced by him and they're massively influenced by him and they studied at his hands at, you know, Edward Said's, uh, you know, uh, professorship. He was such a great man, to be honest. I can't, I, I can't talk about him for, for, for days because he's such a great man in every sense. His last book, which I really loved and admired, it's called Culture and Imperialism. Again, notice the title, Culture and Imperialism. Again, this is a huge text, amazing text. Um, it was published uh, around again the same, the same time. I think 1995 it was published. Uh, that book. Again, uh, I think some of his one of his earliest earliest books, which I really really love. Again, and admire. It's called, you know, it's really a lovely title, Beginnings. And, you know, he called it Beginnings, Intention, and Method. Beginnings, and then Intention and Method, you know, as one, of course, one title. And he, in that book, he talks a lot about structuralism and post structuralism and all this carry on about, you know, modern literary theory. And he was a huge theorist. As I'm saying, all all writers, all professors in the UK at that time, really they have taken from him and borrowed some of his ideas into their own 
really philosophies and questions. And I know this, you know, starting from Terry Eagleton to maybe Christopher Norris and to people in England who were supposed to be really Englishmen um, who were writing uh, about theory and criticism and so on. But I, but I think Said was more powerful than all of them. And my professor at Stirling University, where I was in, in the UK, you know, he told me that. He said, he said this. And I was really very happy to know that, you know, he said all this to me, uh, meaning uh, here you have an Arab who is more powerful than all these uh, scholars because he's such an intelligent man and his writings is such, you know, powerful writing. Mainly, as I said, he established what is called the Orient and the self and the other, because this question of the other and the self, you know, even we, he goes back into psychology and to Freudian, Lacanian, you know, Jungian psychology, which is an amazing thing because nobody really before him uh, talked about this idea of which the self and the other, because always we say the other and you always, even we say, we say here, even in Arabic, we say humma. Mean humma, yammi. Humma, mean. You know, you say humma uh, means, you know, you always say we are the correct one, whereas they, uh, they are the wrong ones. You know, and this is, of course, uh, what we call the self and the other. And this question of other is always marginalized, is always, if you like, really is always demonized, you know? And it, this is really amazing to feel this, how the self and other is uh, an important political question, not just psychological question. You know, even when you are like a child here, of course, as I said, the idea is taken even from Freudian psychology, you know, the self and the other, because kids and children and babies, they love themselves and they hate the other because they think the other is only the mother and they love the mother only, be being the other. But later when they grow up, you know, this other become, uh, in a way, becomes like the enemy and, and the self is always, you know, um, focused on and, and so on. You know, this is in Freudian psychology. Later on, maybe you'll know this uh, in details. So I'm talking here about Said, you know, Edward Said, and his name, Edward, he tells us about that, his name. Of course, uh, remember, he's, as I said, he's, he's, uh, he comes from a Christian family, and Christians name their children mostly by Western names. So, that's okay for anybody, even in Syria today, in Syria and Lebanon and Palestine, we have so many Edwards and so many Charles and so many Georges and, you know, because they, because they think, I don't know, I mean, this is really funny, but um, I think sometimes I feel that they are wrong to do this because these are not Arab names. But um, even when you say, well, even in Arabic, we say even the name Abraham or Ibrahim, you know, is not an Arab name. Yeah, of course, but I mean, this is the idea here. He tells us about his name in, in details in, in here. So let me go back to my friend Edward Said. Now, the idea I want you to read all this chapter, really all this chapter is quite uh, lovely, and there are a lot of details about him. Here he gives us his uh, picture which is a lovely, as you can see, uh, really, if I can make it uh, larger here today, just for, just for our sake to make it a bit large. Um, you know, uh, he's, uh, oh, sorry. I will, I will just make it a bit larger for us. Yeah, where is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I look at this picture, as you can see, you know, you really can see in the face here, you can see, it's, this is him, by the way, when he was a child at school. 
This is himself when he was a boy. This is exactly Edward Said as a boy there. And you can see the innocence and really even the beauty, if you like, of childhood in him there as, as a child in his maybe about nine or 10 or 11 or even 11 or 12 years old when he was at school. And you can see the, the, the you know, as I say, the absolute innocence in his looks and the way he was, as you can see, brought up, disciplined. As you can see, kids there at that time at school, they were uniform uh, with their lovely ties and everything. And really, this is, uh, uh, you know, lovely. I can't, sometimes I just look at this picture and look, you know, he reminds me of my children. And even he reminds me of myself uh, when I was Uh, of this age, but of course I never had. But you see, uh, when you look at him, you see the absolute innocence, you know, and really, uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe this is, if you, I hope that you feel the same, like like what I'm saying. Really, he's, he's an amazing, uh, absolutely amazing, um, uh, really, uh, man. Uh, sadly, as I said, he did not live long due to this he was because in his i think when i met him in 1995 you know uh 90 yeah 90 1995 that was uh i think he was at the peak uh, of his production and he he wrote uh, a lot uh as i said but as i say you know death um is so wicked and uh he 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 um he was killed through this leukemia uh cancer uh so uh, yeah so i i um i'm saying all this about him because uh he was such an influential figure in criticism today in modern theory and criticism as i said his notion of orientalism was unique nobody nobody uh, nobody uh, did what he did uh, there in in that idea about Orient Orientalism and the Orient and how West Westerners describe describe the Orient and us. Um, yeah. So this book, out of place. Here you can see a lot of uh, a lot of ideas. Uh, what he said, uh, for example, here when he said, all families invent their parents and children, give each of them a story, character, fate, and even a language. You know, I mean, when you read this, you say how Edward Said really wants to say uh, that how people, you know, how people sometimes, if you have no if you if you have no if you like family you make your family if you have no history you make history you know and this is really what he means when he said invent uh, meaning meaning sometimes you feel that it's terrible uh, like you know when you go back here to this to booker washington and to frederick douglas who told us that he has no idea who's who is his father, right? He said, I don't know my parents. I don't know my father and so on. And really it's a shame. And that's why he said, you know, people sometimes have to invent stories about their parents. And when Edward Said here is saying invent, don't think that he's creating it out of nothing. Edward Said has his own parents, yeah. And he has children himself, yeah. And, you know, they give a story and so on. In other words, he really, he wants to say here that he's saying, I want to tell you my own real story. Maybe I was not given a good story myself, but I'm going to reinvent my story and tell you my story, you know, of my family, my character, my fate, and so on. Even I will tell you about my language. And even he told us about his name. And he said, why was I called Edward and Saeed, you know, Saeed, very Arabic name. 
and Edward is very Western name, you know? And he was really confused when he was still a child, people, uh, you know, kids and friends asking him, why, why you have this name, you know? And he said that about that a lot. Notice, there was always something wrong with how I was invented and meant to fit in with the world of my parents and four sisters. You see, so this is how he started tell us, to tell us about his family. How, how I was invented, he said. <laughs> you know, the idea, he said, I was invented. Yeah. Meaning, you know, as a, bo as a boy in a family of four five children one boy four girls you know and that's what he he meant there invented um with my parents and four sisters whether this was because i was constantly misread my part or because of some deep flaw in my being i could not tell the most of my early life you know, here, I think Edward Said is writing this. Remember, this is his own writing and his own life. The way he's saying it, he said, maybe the way I'm going to write this, maybe you will think I'm exaggerating or I'm maybe saying something, you know, uh, maybe very romantic or very strange, but I'm going to tell you my story. Sometimes I was <clears throat> in transient or in transition, sorry. Sometimes I was intransigent and proud of it, you know, and using intransigent. Let me put off this AC thing. Yeah, so um, uh, the idea really here, um, I, I just want you to, to, uh, to um, uh, just focus and read the whole thing because really it's, it's lovely. Now, before I finish or before I actually read the whole thing, let me just maybe draw your attention to the idea really that Edward Said is just being throughout this uh, section he is really telling us about his history and about the effect of colonialism and the effect of uh, being outsider to be what whether as i said when he was in egypt or in lebanon or when he went to the states where uh, where he was as a student and later on as a professor and so on he was always in a way in a way, he was always made to feel uh, like, um, you know, out of place. And I think um, he mentioned this uh, here at the end. Let me, let me show you uh, how he um, used uh, the word uh, out of place. Let me see. where he uh, i think maybe in the concluding the concluding uh, the concluding line in this section yeah look here at the end here let me let me read this and thus i became edward a creation of my parents whose daily travails a quiet different who whose daily travails a quiet um different but quiet dormant inner self uh, was being to observe though most of the time was powerless to help edward was principally the son then the brother then finally the boy who went to school and unsuccessfully tried to follow or ignore the circumst the sorry and or ignore and circumvent all the rules. His creation was made necessary by the fact 
that his parents were themselves self-creations. Two Palestinians with dramatically different backgrounds and temperaments living in colonial Cairo as members of a Christian minority within a large pond of minorities with only each other for support without any precedent for what they were doing except an odd combination of pre-war Palestinian habit. American law picked up at random in books and magazines and from my father's decade in the United States. My mother didn't even visit the United States until 1948. The missionaries influence incompleted and hence eccentric schooling, British colonial attitudes that represented both the lords and the general run of humankind they ruled. And finally, the style of life my parents perceived around them in Egypt and which they tried to adapt to their special circumstances. Could Edward's position ever be anything but out of place? You know, this is the concluding here in this chapter, you know, asking this question. Notice, he said, if I'm giving you this name, Edward, you know, this Edward is always felt out of place. Not just that, you know, <laughs> you know, he's, he's using this here. Could this, could Edward position you know, his position ever be anything but out of place, meaning I always felt out of place. And, you know, you can see this is, uh, I, um, I, as you can see here, this is taken from his book, um, Out of Place, uh, published in 1999. Now, the idea really uh, here uh, is, is quite interesting, of course. I, as I said, I want you really to read all this chapter uh, and to focus on this idea, as I'm saying, the idea that this text, he wrote this text like, like Booker Washington and like uh, Frederick Douglass. They wrote, they wrote this text with an idea of rejecting colonialism. Both texts have the same idea, which is the rejection, the absolute undermining and destroying the whole discourse of the colonial power, the whole discourse of occupation, because Edward Said is writing about his own feelings, how he felt um, and never felt at home because his home was taken from him, which is, of course, to him is Palestine and Jerusalem. And all the time he felt that in this text, he's, he wants to say, uh, that the, the colonial power, the absolute colonial power, and there, of course, with him, it was not just uh, colonialism, but it was settlement, because they, the Palestinian case, as you know, the, um, you know, the Zionists, uh, what they did, of course, is occupying and settling and never leaving and kicking and killing uh, the original people uh, of the land, unlike the other, uh, if you like, colonial powers, like, for example, when the British came to Africa or the British came to India and so on, so came and stayed for a while, um, they took what they can and um, they left. Uh, but here in the case of Palestine, it was a terrible thing, really, of course, because it it meant something else, not, not, just, not just occupation for a while, but occupation forever. And really that's why Edward Said uh, felt very, very uh, sad and very horrible and very bad. And he, he or even all these Palestinian people will always feel that our land, our homes are uh, taken away from us. Um, our waters, our trees, our land, our farms, everything taken away from us by, by, by 
people coming from Europe because all the Israelis today, the majority of the politicians today, you know, all these people you see today, maybe on TV today, uh, were born outside, not in, not in, uh, not in, not in Palestine today. Maybe the younger generation now, yeah, those generations maybe maybe let's say 40 or 50 years back yeah because since 1960s in the 19 well because the state of israel today was established in uh, in 1948 which was uh, you know the partition year and anyway the story really for for said is is horrible indeed and similar to booker washington because both both texts are absolutely texts against against colonialism and against superpowers and against occupation and bad treatments and so on and so on. And each one of them in his own different way. Of course, Said indirectly saying all this to us in this story. When you look at his, uh, you know, about his. Uh, the way he was uh, called Edward and so on. You know, he was really ironical and mocking how people sometimes, um, you know, uh, name themselves or how they, uh, uh, you know, as if their minds or their mentality or their attitudes, you know, is somehow maybe uh, occupied, if you like, or taken away from them. And really, this is uh, the idea I want you to um, keep in mind throughout this. So this section uh, is, yes, an introduction, the first very funny little introduction about his life. Uh, there are a lot of uh, funny stories. You know, he's really telling us lovely stories, you know. So uh, read all that because uh, he, uh, you know, gives us uh, as I say, a flavor, a real flavor of what his own life uh, was as a child. And he, he talks about it here in details, like here when he said about his father is called Wadi', you know, and uh, the way he, you know, he said his name, you know, Wadi', and in, in Arabic, uh, the word Wadi', you know, um, is the, again very typical very typical, um, maybe uh, today, typical Lebanese name. I don't know many Syrians called Wadir, but uh, in Lebanon they use this name a lot. I don't know, they like the name. So uh, his, his father's name here, he talks about his father and about his relationship to his father uh, and so on. But he talks more about his mother and the way he, he really... Uh, feels about his mother and how uh, great, uh, uh, you know, ties and ideas and really, uh, um, you know, strong relationship uh, to, his, to his mother. Um, and, um, you know, he talks here about, you know, the language that he used, how he started to speak, um, you know, originally his mother always speaking to him in Arabic words, uh, like here when he said Tislamli, um, and uh, you know, or, or the word like Mish, um, and uh, you know, the the idea really here is, you know, he's giving you uh, words in Arabic how uh, they use. He wants to say, and I don't know if I believe him here. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean Arabs. Palestinians or Lebanese or, you know, even today, people in Lebanon today, today even people sometimes they speak uh, a lot of English words or French words in their, in their Arabic. But the Arabic is their original language, is their native language. And sometimes here in this, uh, he is saying to me or he's saying to us, you know, that, he said, that his mother spoke to him both in Arabic and in English. I mean, I don't know if um, if if I would uh, if I would really believe this that he would speak English better than Arabic. I don't know, but uh, I mean, this is 
I've heard him speaking Arabic. His Arabic is absolutely, uh, you know, native, native Arabic. So, um, with, by the way he speaks, because I spoke to him, you could never tell that he's, uh, he's not a native Arab. Uh, anyway, so the way he tells us about that, really, it's interesting. And it is lovely, really, indeed. Well, um, really, I want to uh, stop here. Uh, really, and uh, I uh, will um, ask you to uh, read the whole thing. Uh, you will be responsible 